primary burn box, you have basically what you would call standard wood stove burning technology. There's a burn going in there. And then from that, you get gases emitted just like you do up your flu. This an old fashioned wood stove called cause creosote and, and whatnot. And what they do is they reignite those gases in a secondary chamber and burn them off. So you burn that creosote and a whole bunch of other things off in advance of it leaving the stack. So here's your traditional equivalent of a wood stove in your house box. The burn does not go up. In other words, the smoke doesn't travel up like in a traditional wood stove. There's a slot in here that'll suck it down into this uh, ceramic chamber. And then air is reintroduced in that ceramic chamber. There's some holes just sort of right in the middle as it's come, as, the, as the flue gas is going down into there. And that air reignites with no apparent fuel source. It reignites. Wow. And um, it gets to be about 1,800 or 2,000 degrees in that ceramic. So we loop about 40 or 50 feet in three kind of... One in tight, and one a little bit bigger, and one a little bit wider, and then packed it down and added about eight to ten inches of packed, soaked chips on top of each layer, and then did another one. And so there's eight layers mm. in this mound. It's around ten tons. It took about 40 or 50 hours of people hours, like three people at a time, whatever, to build it. The coils are at least three feet from the edge of the mound, and it's really packed up. So, I mean, there's a lot of insulation from where the water line is, but I'm, I'm sure that it'll lose heat in the winter. French guy was in southern France and didn't really have much of a winter, but he, he made statements that it would work anywhere, and the compost people I've talked to say it might cool off a little on the edges, but in the center it shouldn't, so. So what do you have in there? It's just a tank? Well, I put like a 55 gallon uh, plastic food barrel, like had, it's like a pickle barrel, and it's just, we filled it up like half full of water just for stability. He claimed it lasts, they last 18 to 24 months. Which I've heard from several other kind of compost experts that wood chips typically take two years to break down. So the whole time, if they're as they're breaking down and the bacteria are doing their thing, there's heat being put out. And so we're basically just compressing all that and trying to capture and transfer that heat. Then would you would you move them out and put new ones in? Yeah. So after it stops working, we tear it down. Which by that time, it'll be pretty dried out and you know like almost like dirt. The really cool thing about this is you know if we could actually heat our house with this without burning anything and the end result is a bunch of really valuable compost you know yeah, the whole awesome. re rebuild the soil because I think that's one of the biggest you know like everybody who's into the climate change carbon stuff most people are not realizing that soil depletion is probably our biggest problem of all this stuff and that getting more carbon in the soil will actually solve a lot of the carbon in the air. I talked to a couple of radiant floor heating companies and they said that if you had 120 degree water at a gallon a minute, you could heat a thousand square feet. A a hundred bucks for each of those loaded chips, it still would make sense, I think, because you you know, if this really heats a thousand square feet for two winters. And the, the pivot point is on the top of the pedestal, so to adjust the tilt or the angle to the sun. This is just a quick uh, which you play out of the bomb trap, um, which we'll see yeah. when we go up there. Right, and so basically, it's what you call small scale district heating. And that building output. right there um, is a cheese making facility. Um, so there are underground pipes running from the wood gasification boiler, which is in this building right here. This unit is very unique. It's uh, made in America, and it's designed by a guy in the Midwest, and designed in 1982, and it's refined it several times, and it's uh, widely accepted. Uh, it's used, you know, quite a few places. The reason this unit is so large is that it is heating multiple buildings, and it's also making processing water. Processing water is uh, water that's used in some form of manufacturing. This is called a bread box style hot water heater. It's got two inch foil backed foam um, on the whole inside, and so the foils reflecting sunlight into the black tank. Like I said before, we got the tank free from the dump. We got these two glass panels also free from the Pella window people. Um, and so the real costs were in getting the, the foil back foam and some of the wood um, and some of the fittings and on the hoses. So um, I think for an average homeowner, you could you could obviously have an outdoor solar shower if you wanted to, but um, 
You could also have this right next to your house and have it preheating water coming out of your well before it goes into your regular hot water. How cold do you think the water coming in is? Probably 50 degrees. And what do you think the water coming out is like? Um, depends on the day. Like first thing in the morning, it won't be that warm. Right. But by mid-afternoon, it comes out at about 120 wow. on, a, on a hot day. This is certainly a do-it-yourself kind of project that any fairly handy person could do on their own in a weekend. Um, the materials cost, I think, for a setup like this is less than $200. It's pretty low-tech, um, doesn't require any maintenance. And um, there are, you know, if you look up Redbox solar hot water heater on the internet, you can download plans and, like, all the information about it. So it really wouldn't replace your existing hot water heater, but it would maybe offset a lot of what it's doing, especially in the summer. Right, especially in the summer. That building right there um, is a cheese-making facility. Um, so there are underground pipes running from the wood gasification boiler, which is in this building right here. <laughs> Future goals that you guys see coming up, or, and that's obviously one. But you know, are you filming us walking? There's some variety in here. <laughs> Come on, a little further. You're, We're almost there. A little you're walk. too good at this. <laughs> Whoa, check it out. Here we are. So it was kind of a really uh, cut and dry deal. I just got to give him a check. Move the mechanics down to uh, eye level. So now I can adjust them by myself. Cool. All right. A ton of heat is equal to about 12,000 BTUs an hour. Here's my neighbor who is a uh, plumbing contractor. Uh, heating and ventilating, you know, contractor, and he loved this stuff. And I'd go over to his house, and he had one, and you know, we do like guys do. We sit around and watch wood burn with beer in our hand, and and I'm like, yeah, this is really interesting. You know, we're actually, it's gone so far. Like I, I'm like an overboard kind of guy. So right now we're having a bill because these units have trouble being placed in commercial buildings because of the kind of certification they are. Um, so we're having a bill drafted now that should go through this session to allow these in commercial buildings. Yeah. We've had to ask for variances and it's been quite an um, arm uh, wrestle to get a variance for them.